Kevin Koreski from Tri-Tip TV and today I'm here with Pip Taylor who is a pro triathlete who came out to San Diego to uh, race California 70.3 this Saturday. Pip, let's uh, let's go back take a little trip down memory lane and get back into when you first started triathlon. What got you involved in sport triathlon? Um, it is going back quite a while now. I think it's my 10th year of racing. Uh, I grew up swimming and running um, and I think it was a little bit of a natural progression, but at the same time not. I mean, I hadn't heard of the sport, I didn't know any triathletes, but I was finished up school and was getting a little tired of swimming, looking for something different, something new. I uh, knew I still wanted to be competitive in the sport and competing, um, and I almost fell into triathlon. And from there, it's been a good 10 years. So I'm going to guess 10 years ago, the technology of the bike you have now versus the technology of the bike you had then, it's probably a little different. <laughs> I started off on a bike which um, found in the trading post. I think it cost me $600. And, um, so right through to the, the Kestrel that I'm riding today, it's, it's a nice improvement. <laughs> That's just a little bit more comfort? comfort. That's it. Easier to shift, a little bit faster? <laughs> Quite a bit faster, I think. You know, last year you uh, you raced a lot of the 70.3 series. You had a you had a lot of success. Do you find your strength is in the 70 point series, 70.3 series, or in the shorter distance course, uh, the Olympic style? I'm really enjoying the race in the 70.3. Um, over the last, I guess, two or three seasons, you know, I've been racing them a bit more. Um, I I got into the sport was racing Olympic distance ITU style. So Over here in the States racing the, the 70.3s and the non-drafting races and, and yeah I do think it um, probably suits my strengths and, and also my mentality and the way I like to train and race. So. Do, uh, do you at all think in the back of your mind that 2012 London's coming up and do you at all toy with the idea of possibly trying to qualify to become part of the Australian Olympic team for 2012? No look I think you know there's, there's two different paths in the sport, there's the IT and the Olympic side and there's so I think at one point you kind of have to make a choice about what you're doing and and the reality too is when it comes down to it, this is my job and I have to do what pays the bills and fortunately I really enjoy that um, but for me it's really important being in the US and, and racing the US races. Okay, well if you're not going to go back, are you going to go forward up to that 140.6 series <laughs> anytime soon? See people out there, I'll be sure you either step <laughs> up or go forward. but. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's um, so much a step forward or a step up. I think you know the 70.3 as it is is a, is a fairly prestigious um, race and an established series now as, as a standalone race. I think it's not so much viewed now as a step up to something else. Um, so certainly, you know, I'll, I'll never say never to Ironman, but certainly it's not on the radar this year, or probably not next year either. I have to say. Um, I like to race and I have a feeling that once once you go to the Ironman you're limited to how many races you can do a year just in terms of being able to recover and, and fit the races in to the schedule. So for me the 70.3 is perfect. You're done by lunchtime, um, can race again the next weekend or the weekend after. And they've done a WTC and then you got the Rev3 group. They've all done a wonderful job seeking out different destinations to even put these races down. We got Miami. We got a sweat last year. We had what, at least eight new races come up, and they're in really nice areas. So not only do you get to go and race, you can almost take a vacation afterwards too, and you're not so tired out with that 70.3 series. That's right. I mean, there's there's so many races now to choose from. It's actually making it quite difficult sitting down in a year and sorting the calendar out. But at the same time, it's great, and that they have put together such a, a good series um, as a standalone series. So after last uh, last year's season, uh, what did you do on your off time? What did, uh, what did you do to relax and kind of get physically and mentally prepared for 2010? The off season seems to go so quickly. <laughs> you kind of forget that it even exists. But for me, the off season is really going home to my hometown in Australia, which is by the beach. So having another summer <laughs> um, and just relaxing, being at home. Um, me shopping at the markets and being in the kitchen cooking is, is a pretty nice way to spend the 
then the bit of off season that I have. Um, and then, as you say, getting refreshed for 2010 and um, I guess getting in the right frame of mind. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to this year. So. Do you, when you're taking time off, do you take complete time off or do you still throw a little bit of swim, bike and run in that, quote, time off period just to kind of stay lubricated and keep the joints going in the direction they still need to go because you still have to do this the following year? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the time off, as you say, you might have a very short period of time, which is actually time off, um, and then a bit longer time where it's... It's you just kind of ticking the training over and you're moving and because I think too that that's what makes you feel like I don't want to stop completely. It's, I don't think it um you know an athlete's an athlete you can't stop moving completely. Right. <laughs> so it's interesting about your training. I know a lot of people know this is that you know New South Australia is a big area to train. Boulder, Colorado, Tucson, Arizona, San Diego, California, and you train in Kansas. Can you explain why you, 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 you pick Kansas of all these beautiful meccas of triathlon <laughs> training and racing areas? Yeah, for the last, I guess the last couple of seasons we've been in the town of Lawrence, Kansas, um, which we stumbled across by accident when we went there for the race. But it's been fantastic for us. It's, um, you know, it's, it's quiet and I like, I like the quiet town, which makes it really easy to get out training um, and get done what you need to get done. They've got great facilities as well. I think it's a bit of a museum right in the middle of the country. Uh, it's not going to be hidden when people keep seeing you win. I guess it's going to start, there's going to be a new Mecca born. The Pip Taylor. Hopefully not too many people. So. Right. What, now, of all the races you've done in the 70.3 series, what style, of course, suits your style of racing? Now? Is it the hilly bike, the flat bike, a hilly run, a flat run? What does what, what your strengths lie? You know, I think I'm still probably trying to figure that out myself as well. And I think it there's so many factors that go into racing aside from the course. Um, and pulling all three disciplines together, you know, it's it's not an easy task, I think, for anyone, getting all three right on one day. Um, but, you know, hopefully the course this weekend is the one that suits me, I think. A bit of hills on the bike um, and a, a nice flat run and hopefully quite cool. Oh, it's going to be cool at the start. There's no doubt about that. Well, you know, is there anything else you'd like our, our viewers to know about you, Pip? I don't know. I think I think they can probably find everything they know on my website, which is pipsailor.com. Who are some of your sponsors this year? I have some fantastic sponsors. Obviously, I'm riding uh, Kestrel Bike. Um, Pacific Health Lab, which is accelerating sports up, fantastic nutrition products, profile design. Um, a VIA Rudy project? A VIA, obviously, so Granny Shoes, it's a great Rudy project, of course. Um, I don't know, who else? Who else is on my <laughs> shirt, Kevin? I think you've got them all. <laughs> if, uh, you know, young girls coming into sport, what advice would you give them? I think get out there and, and have fun. Um, which I know is kind of the advice that everyone gives, but it's really, don't be afraid of it. Right. Be, just have confidence in yourself that you can do it and, and back yourself with what you're doing and just enjoy it. We're going to see you this year racing. Yeah. All over. I'll be all over the country. All crossing, right. Crossing backwards and forwards. It's going to make my job a lot of fun then <laughs> watching right. Pip, thank you very Thanks. much. <laughs> I'm Kevin Kresge. This is Pip Taylor. Thank you for watching.